Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Lincoln Creek, Nebraska, and uh, we've been running the dryer all night here. We're making a little bit of progress. We've got a fair amount of corn processed. We did run out of uh, propane here at one point, and so we bought a bit more of that. Not as much as I probably should. This will keep the dryer running for a little bit, but we are out of funds, and I really don't want to take out a bigger loan. And so we need to get some of these bales sold here today to continue to fund uh, bringing some propane in for this dryer. I think that's our plan. And so we managed to, I believe, fill this truck up here. We've got uh, that all full. We've got a bit sitting in the dryer right now that we need to empty out. And we've got these trucks here. We can probably get these trucks emptied into the, uh, we'll say, wet bin holding capacity here. So we're going to go ahead and fire this truck up, get it emptied in at least. And uh, hopefully I can get all of this in there and get it out of the way. And uh, I really like to have all of our corn into the bin system here so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, and then we need to go out and get the rest of this baling figured out. We need to finish baling everything up. We've got to get the bales off of these cornfields so that we can start in on tillage today. So that's the, that's the plan today. It looks like all of this semi, at least, is going to fit into the corn dryer. So we're going to go ahead and pull this up here out of the way. We did manage to wash our equipment up last night, but we didn't put any of it away in the sheds yet. All of our equipment is pretty much low on fuel and in need of some seasonal repairs. So we're gonna be putting that stuff in the shed over there, I think, and uh, doing a little fixing on it here before we put it away for the year. So that's why I didn't just shove it back into the uh, main storage shed there. But we've got to focus on some of the harvest stuff before we get into maintenance mode here on the farm. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get uh, get this truck all set up here ready to unload as well. Oh boy, we're doing it on camera today, folks. Got it all lined up here. And we're going to go ahead and just start dumping this truck in as well. See how much of this the dryer is going to hold. Looks like at least a little bit of it. If we turn our HUD back on here, we're going to get probably a good 20-30% of this uh, trailer emptied out, which is awesome. There we go. We've got almost half of it uh, put in there. The dryer's full, but the auger has a bit of a capacity as well. So we got a full 50% of this truck loaded in. We're going to shut it down. We'll leave it all set up here at some point before the end of the episode. Hopefully enough time has passed we can get the rest of this corn out of here uh, so with that we don't have a tractor to come run this auger just yet but uh, that brings us to the next part of today's episode which is a purchase I have made for the farm if we come over here we picked up this uh, big text gooseneck trailer here for the pickup uh, we're gonna be able to load square bales onto this trailer and hopefully get these up to the sell point a little bit faster I'm digging the automation we've got with uh, course play right now on the bale collection mode, but 16 bales at a time is just not cutting it. And so this big text trailer has easy auto load. Uh, we're gonna break from uh, realism just a little bit here so that we can get these bales off of the field because otherwise uh, course play is gonna be running on moving these bales for a couple of days real time, I think I'm estimating right now across all of our fields. And so that's just uh, not going to work for us. So we're going to use easy auto load here to help us get the bales off of this field. Now, what I'm curious about, and we're going to test it out in this episode, is will the bale collection mode work with an auto load trailer? I don't know. Let's go try. So we're up here at field 50. I have stopped the worker from picking up any more bales while we... Uh, bring this out here to test it out there's a little bit of a ditch right there that uh, I wasn't expecting and so the trick with this auto load trailer is that it has two different sizes and so I have to make sure we picked the large square bales for the 35 foot trailer here uh, which we have and I'm gonna turn work mode on 
and then I'm gonna grab this sell bales course and I cannot use bale mode here with this trailer so that kind of answers that question not totally unexpected but if I'm being honest look at all of these bales out here I think we're going to end up doing a faster job running around and picking up these bales on our own than relying on course play to do this job for us behind the scenes. So the auto load zone on this trailer is fairly uh, narrow. It's uh, you got to get pretty close to the bales to pick them up, which is probably not a bad thing most of the time, but it doesn't lend itself well to just zipping around the field real fast to get all of these bales. So I do have to be a little bit uh, careful. I got to pay attention, I guess I should say. And uh, whoops, see, I missed that bale entirely. But either way, we're going to be able to hold 33 bales on a trailer here, which is way better than the 16 we're getting on the tractor trailer. And our road speed getting up to the cell point is going to be a lot better with this truck. And uh, that's where we're really going to save the time here. And so doing this job manually is uh, going to help us out. Now, I'm seeing here this trailer. We don't have the uh, ramp section on the back here. And these last few bales are, uh, are hanging off the back in a really funny kind of awkward way. So we're going to change that here real quick just so that the trailer doesn't look uh, ridiculous. Oh my goodness, that's ridiculous looking. There we go, we've got the mega ramps on and uh, apparently it all fell off. So let's get this going. Connected, fold it up. Oh, bales everywhere. And auto load mode on. There we go. Look at that, so much uh, better there. So with our bale trailer all loaded up, do I have the option to strap? I have straps, but they're not actually strapping anything. Whatever, we're gonna leave auto load mode on and uh, that way we can unload it and when we get up there, we won't have to worry about uh, losing any bales. We are full. And so let's see if we've got a auto drive point to get up there. Uh, we do not. So we've got a field right across from there, field 24. So we're going to use the field 24 auto drive point here to send this truck up there. Once we get up there, I'll set up an auto drive point inside the animal dealer just to make our lives a little bit easier here with this process. But uh, this is going to go at least twice as fast, if not even faster. Uh, with the way road speeds work here on this map. This is a 4x map, so we're covering a lot of distance to get up to the cell point here. And then if we jump over here to our baler, we were running uh, soybean straw here up on field 32. I think what we're going to do is now jump up here to field 24 and finish up our soybean straw, and then we'll get switched over to run this down in our big cornfield towards the bottom of the uh, map here after we're done with the soybean straw. Now I'm looking at my fuel. We're almost out of fuel here. So the other thing we're gonna need to do is get our truck uh, fuel tank all filled up here with diesel and bring some out to this baler so it can keep going. But we're gonna at least get this guy moved over to the field here and then uh, we'll have to figure out the diesel situation momentarily. Oh man, that bale trailer's coming up fast. Is auto drive gonna detect me on the road here or are we gonna have an incident? Oh, there's the brakes. Very nice way to go auto drive. All right, well, since we're here and we do have a little bit of fuel, we're gonna go ahead and just start this guy off. Let him do some baling while we figure everything else out. And her truck is up here at field 24. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing into edit mode and see if we can figure out how to put a uh, 
waypoint here in the main uh, cell point area. Our course here with the turnaround and everything for field 24. All the hectic lines all over the place. I'm gonna go ahead and just record a course coming into the animal dealer here. We're gonna put a pin in. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to back into this point anyway when we're delivering these bales, I think. So I'm not gonna try and uh, figure out how to get auto drive to go into there. And for the time being, we're gonna just uh, set this up in such a way knowing that we're almost always gonna be coming from this one direction. There's a turnaround there by the field if we ever need to have a more, if we ever need to go the other way out of this place, we've got that sort of kind of set up here. Not the best, but it'll, it'll do for now. And so with that all sorted, let's, uh, let's see if we can sell these bales now. So we need to unload. Boom, there we go. That was way easier than I expected it to be. Let's uh, get this guy headed up to field 50 again. And uh, yeah, that was $946 in uh, one trailer here. So we'll be making progress so much faster now. Although I'm a little concerned by this 10 minute timer to get back to field 50. Do we not have a great course for getting back there? I bet we don't have a ability to cross over on the auto drive course to this point. We're going to have to uh, solve that when we get back down here. So coming back down here to field 50, the main reason that uh, it was going to take so long is we've got no way to actually get back into our point when we're headed this way down the road. And so what I'm going to do is uh, hop on this main path right here. And I think from this point, I'm going to make a little uh, circle part here where we kind of go off the side of the road just a smidge and then zip back around into here and into this other course. So this is going to let us, uh, hopefully, get to field 50 a little bit easier here. Now, it's a really tight course, especially with this trailer. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of the trailer and stuff gets left in the road when we're doing this and such, but... Either way, we're going to uh, circle back around and just give this a shot, see how it looks when we come into it, and uh, go from there. As long as we don't run into the field or hit a telephone pole, we should be all right. This is a really long trailer for this, but we're not uh, we're not having any issues. It looks like we're even going to get more or less off of the road. Um, we wouldn't be able to get by that with something else, but uh, you know what? I think for today, that's gonna do it. So we'll go ahead, set that back to Animal Dealer. We're gonna need that in a second. And we're gonna come out here and pick up some more bales. So let's uh, get auto load mode turned back on here let's turn off the auto drive edit mode because we don't need to see the uh, indicators for that and the nice thing about uh, getting out here and doing this is we can actually go down the rows for the most part here and pick up these bales without having to do a lot of the crazy turns I was doing up in that smaller section of the field so this is gonna really speed up loading the trailer and it looks like uh, whatever we were doing earlier <laughs> dragged a whole bunch of bales down here to the end of the field. So this is going to make for easy loading, uh, getting this trailer filled up here.
we'll just uh, clean this mess up all at once. And I was kind of wondering if this uh, Super Duty was going to be able to pull this big trailer with all these bales on it, but it is champing it out no problem. And uh, the, here we go. We've got a, another full trailer here already to get up to the sell point. This is going a lot faster than the tractor. We just have to do most of the work ourselves. So at least we're able to use auto drive for the road time in between. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this guy go. He's going to take about five minutes to get up there, which gives us enough time to do something else. And so I think that something else is going to be to send this tractor back up to the farm. Um, we don't really need this auto load trailer. if We're going to use the pickup to do this moving forward, I think. And so what I'm going to do is unload these few bales here on the headland so that we can pick this up with the other trailer. And I think we're actually going to sell this uh, Stack Pro and get our money back, reinvest that into something else. We did have to pay for the other trailer. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And uh, that also frees this tractor up to go back on an auger for us, which will be awesome because we've got to get that corn moved out of the dryer and back into a bin. So let's do a little bit of equipment shuffling and I'll check back in with you guys up at the farm. All right, it looks like our tractor is back up at the yard here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect this trailer here. We'll, uh, we'll get this sent back up to the dealer. We've got a pretty good relationship with our local dealer here, so I think we'll get a fair price trading that back in. We put a few hours on it, but nothing too extensive. And let's get this guy lined up on the auger here. We've got a, a lot of dry corn that I wanna get into this bin here. And for those that don't know, I uh, run bloopers at the end of my videos for crazy things that happen. So last episode, you may have uh, seen or in one of the last couple of episodes, we had some major bloopers trying to get this auger into position here. So uh, check out the ends of the videos. Uh, lots of funny things happen when you're making content on YouTube. So. Uh, stick around to the end if you want to see uh, all the things that I have problems with as we go through things. Now, I'm uh, trying to remember this auger is awesome in that it has multiple control groups. And so I'm trying to find the right one to tip this. There we go. So that it sits a little bit flatter. That looks good. I like it. We're going to go with that. And let's go grab our grain truck that's all filled up with the dry corn here and get it into this bin. Now, the disorienting thing, and I could do the math, but uh, all this is in liters. And I'm used to thinking about my corn in bushels. And so putting it into the bin, we'll be able to see where we're sitting for a total in dry uh, bushels here so far. And uh, I don't know that I'll be able to do the the guesswork off the top of my head here for how many more bushels we're going to get out of there. But uh, it's quite a bit, and I'm looking forward to see if we can fill at least one of these bins. We went way over our capacity um, when we put in all this bin site. We're running a pretty small farm, and we've got more than enough bins for a much bigger setup. Now, I'm trying to see. I don't see the corn going into the top of the bin but I also don't see it stacking up in the auger here. So it must be making its way into the bin here. Sometimes the animations, oh, there is, nope. Sometimes the animations are just a little funny here in Farm Sim, but we are loading up the dry corn here. We're already at 6% of this bin. Ah, maybe we will fill this bin up. We'll see how it goes. So that's all in there. Let's go see if we've got another full trucks worth in the dryer already. We may even have a couple of trucks worths in there because we did run the dryer all night. So this will be an interesting test just to see how fast this is running and how much we need to be paying attention to it. It's gonna help if I put the truck under the auger though. And I have to say, 
Um, I'm really liking this grain dryer setup. It looks cool. Um, ooh, we had 500 bushels just sitting in the auger. That's uh, interesting that it holds that much on its own. We've got another 2,000 plus bushels in the dryer already. Um, I like the dryer animations. I like the look of the dryer. I do wish that I had a better way to kind of set up a real wet bin and have it run in with the auger. Um, we'll have to figure that out because there's two different types of augers in Farm Sim. There's the type like what I'm using here that loads into the truck where you hop into the auger and trigger it to start unloading from one thing to the other. And then there's this type that acts like a trigger where you dump into it and then it automatically unloads into something else. And so what I would need is a big auger like this that functions like one of these, which would be a fairly easy edit. Um, I just haven't gotten around to that yet. So it looks like our truck is full and the auger is just filling up its uh, own 500 bushel capacity, which is all, always a little weird. It's almost like it's its own little holding tank, but we could probably tweak that down to be uh, just a couple of bushels. It needs to have a capacity of some kind for it to function appropriately. And so I understand why that is from a farm sim mechanic perspective, but uh, 500 bushels is a bit much. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep dumping this corn into this bin and we'll, uh, we'll see how far we get here. So I tabbed up here to check on our truck and it looks like the auto load functionality turned itself off at some point. I don't know what happened, but all of our bales fell off the back of this trailer here. And so we're going to have to load these back up. Now, thankfully, they're all right here by where the truck was at. I'm really not sure what caused that to happen. Maybe it, uh, it's because it's out of the loaded game chunk or something like that. I don't know. It's a very bizarre, but that could have been a big mess if I'd have to have uh, run back and tried to find all of those bales on different parts of the route. So we'll keep an eye on this and see if... Uh, if this happens again or if I can figure out maybe what's causing that, um, I'd really like if we could just strap those down. Maybe if I turn auto load off while I'm sitting still and then uh, try to strap those bales down, it would work better. I don't know. We'll get this thing back up to the field, though, and uh, we'll try and mess around with that before we send it back up here again. Either way, I want to keep this truck moving. Uh, because we've got way too many bales to deal with today. Another truck into the bins. We're going to uh, keep going on this corn as well. I think we've probably got maybe two more grain truck fulls here in the, in the uh, dryer yet to go. So we're going to catch up real quick here, obviously, on the dry corn. Yep, we don't have that much left in there, so... We'll get caught up on dry corn here, but uh, I'll be curious to see if we can get all of the wet corn dried in a 24-hour period. We're, uh, we're still pretty full up, and I don't have uh, capacity to put any more from the semi-trailer into that grain dryer yet. Now, I haven't been running the time up on the game. I could be running at 5x to pass more hours right now but I want to keep us in the morning here on day two of early autumn because we might try and seed some winter wheat here before, uh, before we pass out of early autumn and see if we can get a crop of winter wheat in and then still put beans in some of these fields. Uh, I'm not sure how that works in this geo exactly, but either way, some winter wheat sounds like something fun to do. So this truck makes it back up to field 50. Lickety split here. It worked out really well with this uh, little, I guess, uh, U-turn that we put into our auto drive setup here. So let's get this thing loaded and we'll test out the uh, strapping mechanism here. All right, so we've got this all loaded up. So let's uh, bring up our UI here actually. And I'm going to hit the auto loader unload and see what happens while we're sitting still. 
And then if I strap this, it's gonna strap everything except for the ones on the very back, it looks like. Yeah, that's a problem. All right, so that doesn't really work for me. So we're gonna turn the auto loader back on and uh, grab those back bales with the auto load and then hopefully they're gonna stay on here and we're gonna go ahead and send this guy back up to the animal dealer and hopefully auto load stays loaded here. I guess the alternative is as I could take myself down to 30 bales or 27 bales, I guess, not load these back six that can't be strapped down. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. So we're letting that uh, bale trailer take its way up to the animal dealer here. And we're going to see how much of this trailer we can sneak into the grain dryer and auger here. Not enough. We've still got 43%. Uh, so we got a ways to wait here on that. That's all right. We're uh, we're all caught up on the grain truck side of things as well. We'll put the last little bit into the grain truck just so I don't have to think about it. But we don't even have a full grain truck here. And if we pop open the UI here, I just want to make sure we still got 3,000 liters of propane here. So we're doing pretty good on that front in the moment. Um, nothing really to think about or do with that. Let's pop open our commodity menu here and just see how much dry corn we've got. We've got almost 6,000 bushels of beans harvested here. Um, I think if we scroll over here to our dry corn, we'll be able to see in our silos, we've got a little over 5,000 bushels of dry corn here. And uh, really, we haven't put that many loads into it. So we're going to have quite a bit of corn here soon hopefully and uh yeah we're gonna just keep things going looking at the bin that 5,000 sub bushels is only 191,000 uh liters here of dry corn so we'll likely be able to get the rest of uh our corn into this bin maybe we'll need to put a little bit into a second bin uh, but we've got way more capacity than we need uh, we've got one bin for sunflowers one bin for soybeans and maybe two bins for corn here leaving us with three completely empty bins so we got lots of capacity here to expand the farm next year and pick up a lot more fields so let's jump over to the animal dealer here it looks like we've still got our bales on the trailer here which is good so we'll go ahead and get these sold and send this guy back out to the field to do it all again so with our bailing setup running here, we're going to go ahead and start shuffling some of this equipment around here, I think. We want to get uh, all of this stuff over by the sheds here. We're going to need to fix this up and uh, get everything in the appropriate state before we store it. I hate storing stuff and then come uh, next season when you want to use it, it's all broke down and needing a bunch of work. So. We're going to get the doors opened up here and pull all of this equipment over here into the main shop. Get it all folded up and uh, give us the opportunity to work on this over the winter when we need to. And we'll shuffle all the equipment around again here later. We do need to get our tillage going here still. We're waiting to get these bales off of the fields though. I did not anticipate when we decided that we were going to bale these fields that it was going to take this long to uh, get all the bales off of the fields. So that was kind of our big surprise here that's really holding us back from getting going here on tillage. That's why I'm really focusing on field 50. Man, field 60 is going to be even more of a headache to get all of these bales off. But we went to the trouble of... Uh, setting things up to create the corn stalks so we might as well sell them and get that profit at this point we'd be leaving money uh leaving money on the table here or on the field i should say if we didn't end up doing the bailing at this point and we've invested all that money in purchasing a baler so we've definitely got to uh, recoup those costs and we've got some costs sunk into 
getting this thing for a little bit and uh, now we're getting rid of it again. So speaking of, let's go ahead and sell this thing back. We'll just call the dealer up and uh, have him come pick it up just like that. And we just keep, uh, whoa, bring in stacks of bales here. The auto load does turn itself off, I think, when the game saves. And so when I hit escape to get into the game menu, uh, I think that's when auto load is uh, getting disconnected and or just when the truck gets out of range of the player, maybe. And uh, it's unfortunate, but as long as uh, I don't tab to it at the wrong time, it doesn't seem to be too big of a problem. So we're just going to keep our eye on it until it's a big mess and causes a problem. We're going to keep moving and grooving here with the way that we've got this set up. It's uh, slightly less realistic in that I'm not actually loading these up on the trailer myself, but let's be honest, we've already invested a couple of hours into hauling bales today with this setup. I can't imagine if I was stacking them all myself, so look at all of these bales. This guy finished the first half of the field. We're out of fuel. We've got like fumes in here, so we're going to leave him set in here. One of these times, I'm going to bring a uh, bunch of diesel back on the pickup and get us refueled. But uh, for today, I think we're in a good enough spot. We're definitely not going to catch up with the baler. So this thing is an absolute beast. It uh, gets through these fields real quick. So this has been a great investment for us. And I think we're going to wrap the episode up here today. And I will continue uh, hauling these bales off camera, I think, for a bit because that's going to take us a bit of time. Next episode, we'll jump into tillage. That's all for today. Kedrick, out. I uh, did not anticipate when we decided to do some bailing. Oh. Whoopsies.